And, um, and I'm going to go to John 4. This is when, oh, let me start this clock here. This is when Jesus was walking by the well. And um, he came across a, a lady there. Let's see, verse... Okay, verse 10. So he comes to this well, Jacob's well, it's called. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. As I was reading this, I was thinking about how we, we are a well of living water wherever we go. Every place you and I go, work, store, anywhere, you're that well. Even home by, by yourself, you are this well. There's living water within us. And we have to desire to share that water, this is sort of along the lines of what we spoke about on Friday night, the blessing of outreach, the blessing of outreach to brothers and sisters, the blessing of, of um, meeting that need, as Pastor Dave was talking about this morning. It is enough. And so I'm just going to give you a little example here. I'm, I'm going to leave the podium. Jeff and I will try and talk loud. So is, is there anybody on Zoom? Oh, okay. We're by ourselves. I guess we don't have to talk real loud. <clears throat> um, just to give you a little example about your day. Your day is different. And um, a, way, a way to approach someone with the gospel, things to have on our mind to prepare us as we're wanting to preach the word of God. So here I am. I'm just going through my day, just walking around. We take the bus to with this guy here. Now this time, you don't know this, but you're hearing my thoughts. He has no idea. He can't hear my thoughts. But in my mind, as I'm thinking, I thought, living water in me. Jesus Christ lives inside of me. And beside this guy living without a son. <laughs> I don't know if he knows. Jesus lives in him by the Holy Spirit. Reach out to him. It can't just be for me. You're hearing my thoughts. This is what's going on in my mind. Remember, he doesn't even know what I'm doing. He can't hear my thoughts. But in my mind, I just want to share this amazing water, living water. No matter how he reacts, I'm going to try this. Hey, I'm trying to give you an invitation here. It's a uh, invitation. You come here about Jesus and how he wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no. Okay. Next day, huh? A good book. And sometimes people just aren't interested. But we still have this living water inside of us. So we have to try. The bus has to come, but I might as well. I'll probably never see him again. Hey, so I had this experience. I received the Holy Spirit from Jesus. And when I did, I spoke in a language I've never been taught before. He changed my life, turned away from sin, got baptized. It's crazy. You can have that too. If you don't just want to take it, I'll stand up this way. I'll keep you in prayer. I 
a good bus ride, sir. So sometimes you go out to preach, preach the gospel and the person's totally uninterested. But I planted a seed. And he may be like, like Mary Parker with Dave where he goes and puts that pamphlet in a drawer and years later, later they come along. We just don't know. But no matter how, how they respond, we've got this living water. Jesus is... Jesus is the perfect example of sharing what the Father asked him to do. Because when you read about all that Jesus did, he's talking about going, going about doing his Father's will, preaching the word of God, laying hands on the sick, praying for the lost, doing miracles. He was just all about his Father's business. As well, he, he did his day-to-day -day things as well. We've got our day-to-day -day things that we all have to do. But if we can keep in our mind, I just want to share this living water. Even if it's at home with our families, share a scripture, a little testimony, a word of encouragement. It's, it's so, so important for us to grow in the Lord that we can be at home and sharing with those in our house we're at work, we're trying to reach out to them and we're stirring up this water. It's like, it's like a river. We, we always hear the analogy of, of the river flowing. It's filled with life. It's filled with vibrancy and, and there's the fish and, and it looks great and it's wonderful to watch. But the stagnant parts where the water's not moving is all green and looks yucky. If we're stirring this water of the Holy Ghost within us, really valuing it, wanting to draw from it ourselves. I guess we have to look at that aspect as well. We're drawing from this water too. And so we're, we're reaching out to brothers and sisters, we're reaching out to the lost. And within ourselves, we're, we're reaching to draw upon this water through prayer, through reading the word of God, through fellowship and wanting the Lord to use us. And that's, that's keeping us in the center of that beautiful river flowing. And as we keep reaching out, you're going to come across people just like that, that are, are not interested at all at that time. But if you, as we keep doing, doing it, and I'm talking to myself too, as I keep doing it, um, you're going to come across someone who's going to start asking you questions and someone who's interested and someone who is that seed that's going to grow, that'll give you their phone number and you reach out to them and you follow them up and maybe invite them over, invite them out for a coffee or tea. And it's all a part of stirring this beautiful water. And just think about Jesus speaking to this lady at the well, how, how he must have felt. Just excited to talk to this lady about the power of God and, and who he was and reaching out to her to show her, I know everything about you. I know you've had several husbands and all these things. And, and just trying to show her that she was standing before the Son of God. Um, skip, skip down to verse 19. Woman, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when, he, when you shall neither yet, when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We, wor we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As we value this river of water within us we're worshiping god we're showing the lord how how much we appreciate that he is in us by the holy spirit and that appreciation is is a form of worship because we're honoring the lord we're thanking him and and i'll thank the lord for the opportunity to give that guy at the bus stop a pamphlet 
even though he didn't seem interested. And, and I'll pray for him. Ben, he's here. No. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's a form of worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. We know this amazing truth. We're going to share it. And yes, worshiping in the spirit, it's partly praying in tongues as well. That's, we pray in tongues. But also with our spirit in our body, we're honoring the Lord in all we do. Praise the Lord. Skip down to verse 27. Upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him saying, master, eat. But he said, I have meat that you know not of. Jesus was drawing upon the water. That was his meat. That was his food. And when we are recognizing this incredible river within us and we're sharing it with each other, we're sharing these rivers of living water, we're realizing where our food comes from. It's not my job. It's that, that doesn't give me eternal life. It's doing God's will. If we can find, our, find a way to do, do what pleases the Lord during the day, Jesus is trying to say to him, I've got a different type of food. And it's doing what pleases my Father. If we're going through something difficult, and if we can think, Lord, what, what can I do for you today? I'll read, I'll pray, I'll sing, I'll honor, I'll live a good life before you. That's feeding, that's the meat we're feeding upon, doing our Father's will. Therefore said the disciples one to another, if any man brought him out to eat, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. <clears throat> I had an experience on Friday. I was at work and I had a bunch of calls. And I've told some people that I'm, they're teaching me how to do, they call it cook, laundry, and dish. And uh, Pastor Dave knows all about that. To him, it's a breeze. To me, I know nothing. <laughs> and, and I was about to go to this last call. It was like 5.30. And I was putting in two parts that I had, and I had no idea how to put them in. <laughs> and um, and this, this one other technician called me and said, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm going to come over and help you. And I was like, oh, praise the Lord. Because I would have been there a long time. I don't think I would have made the house move. And um, but this guy came and helped and showed me exactly what to do. And it was, I was, oh, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> and I'm sure the I'm sure the homeowner was glad too. <laughs> and um, and um, but at the same time, it was really neat because I could just feel the Lord just helping me have an attitude of, okay. Whatever happens, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And as if I'm drawing upon the rivers of living water, even though I was about to face something that I really didn't know how to handle. And, and, um, and this is our life. If we can find a way through what we're going through to say to ourselves, okay, what, what would the will of the Lord be in this instant? And even if it's just think about a scripture and rejoice in the Lord, Hallelujah. That those thoughts will bless us and lift us up and strengthen us. And we may be in a situation where we can speak to someone about the Lord, but you might not be. And those waters are to draw on 24-7. And we've just got to draw. It can be we're seeing all that's going on in the world today, the wars and everything, and it can unsettle us and we just draw on that water and the Lord gives us peace and helps us to realize it's not the governments of this world that, that is our hope. It's Jesus Christ and his government's going to be righteous and perfect. So we'll let him rule in our life now and, and reach out to this lost world. Praise the Lord. Go quickly, please, to Romans 8. Just for a few thoughts here. 
Romans 8. We all battle with this. No one is immune. Not one person. <clears throat> we can look at someone and think that, oh, they're doing just fine. But no, nope, they all go through. We all go through these these battles. And um, in Romans 8, verse, or sorry, I'll start in verse 5. For they that are for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And, and this is the battle within us. We have a mind that that wants to pull us towards the things of, the, of this world, like in verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. To just follow whatever our mind says we should do, like say on Friday, if um, part of my mind was thinking, I should just really freak out right now. <laughs> and I thought, no, that's not going to do anything. That's not going to solve the issue. And, um, and, and so I was able to say, Lord, you handle this. And boom, this guy called and said, I'm going to come over and help. Even though he actually wasn't supposed to because he's now on overtime. And, but he called my manager and said, I'm going to go help Ward. So praise the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> and um, to be carnally minded is death. If we allow our flesh and our natural mind to have the control in a way it's, it, that it's going to pull us away from the word of God, from doing what the will of the Lord is, that's the way of death. That's the way of pain. That's the way of, if I freaked out on fri Friday, it would have been, I, I wouldn't have been very happy. And um, so carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Such a simple scripture. Easy to read it, right? It's easy to re read it. But when, when we're in the midst of a storm, it's, it's like you have to read a verse like that and go, okay, life and peace. And maybe it means 10 minutes of prayer, 20 minutes or more, or maybe less, maybe... Maybe, maybe it means going to just sit and reading, reading the word, calling a brother or sister, singing a song, um, listening to a talk, whatever. We all know things that will help us to click our mind to be, click our mind into gears, what I was trying to think, to be spiritually minded. And then the blessing flows as we just spend that time with the Lord. Verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that they, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if we're just letting our mind lead us to do whatever, we won't be pleasing God. But you're not in the flesh. It's not us. Yes, we have this body of flesh, but we're in the spirit. We're all spirit filled. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, and he does. If any man have not the spirit of Christ's enemies, none of his as we often will tell people in preaching the gospel. <clears throat> and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And when I was experiencing that anxiety on Friday, what replaced it was life. I could just feel the Lord just, as if he's just wrapping his arms around me and just say, it's okay, it's gonna be all right. Just go do the best you can, learn, and, um, and you'll make it to the meeting. And praise the Lord, I did. Use this living water. Love this living water. Draw from it. Spend time with the Lord daily. And just love that time of fellowship with him as you're drawing on this water. And then it creates with us, within, this, within us this desire to, whoa, I can't hold this back. I can't not share this with someone. Even if they don't want to listen, I got to try. And, and you'll find yourself, you're somewhere, wherever you are, and you're with someone who's not in the Lord, or you might be with a brother or sister, and you just, just got to share it, a testimony, word of encouragement. And we'll be enjoying this river within. We'll give other people the opportunity as well. We'll strengthen brothers and sisters, and we'll grow in the Lord. All people said, amen. amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Let's have a time of prayer. If you have